Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds, the channel that loves Pokemon games and keeps buying retro handhelds to play more Pokemon games on as many handhelds as you can. Today, we're going to talk about how to play popular Pokemon fan games that are usually on the PC, but we're going to be playing them on Android. And I'm going to be using my AYN Odin 2 to do so. Now, when I say fan games, I don't mean ROM hacks. I mean fan games like Pokemon Uranium, Pokemon Reborn, Rejuvenation, Insurgents, Reunion, all of the ones that are available on PC and don't have any of the other options. So you can't play them on Android or you can't play them with a Game Boy Advance emulator and things like that. So fan games. Maybe you've heard of some, maybe you haven't, but if not, then you just got access to a whole bunch of new games that you can now play. Now there's a disclaimer here. Out of all of the guides that I think I've ever done on my channel, Joyplay and playing these types of games on Android is the most difficult one to do. This isn't a great program as far as compatibility goes and as far as everything working. It's kind of held together by hopes and dreams and duct tape. <laughs> it's am amazing that everything actually works as it is and you can actually boot up these games. So I'm going to go through the guide and I can guarantee that it at least works for the AYN Odin 2 and at least works for playing a little bit. I don't know if every game is going to start crashing after a half hour or three hours or whatever, but I can guarantee you that at least it starts up. Back to the games, and I mentioned it before, but we're going to be using a program called Joyplay. And it's not an emulator, it's very similar to an emulator, you can think of it that way, but it helps you play games from PC on your actual device and like RPG maker games and things like that. So it's perfect for Pokemon fan games. It's available for free through a Patreon post. No money is required and all of the links you'll need for this guide is in the description. The current latest public version as of this video is 1.20.410. So go right ahead and download the mega link. Then you want to download the latest RPG Maker plugin, and that one is 1.20.53, and that's available if you scroll a little bit up and it's in its own post. Lastly, for this last one, you're going to need to head to my description and you want to download the Joyplay Mapping Generator. We need this last file to do controller mappings, so it's kind of important. Those three APKs are all you need. Open and install each APK, but start with the Joyplay one first. Then you can do the other two afterwards. Go ahead and open Joyplay, and keep hitting Next, then accept the terms and the privacy policy. And then you have to allow every permission that it asks for. There's a bunch of permissions. Finally, we're at the home screen of Joyplay. And now we need to get a game or games to continue on. I would suggest downloading them through your device's browser. That would be the easiest, but I'm going to show the PC route instead, and then I'll be moving them to the device afterwards. Either way works, but if you download them to the device directly without a PC, use the file manager called Solid Explorer File Manager, as it has the ability to extract the zips, and it's just an awesome file manager. I'm going to rapid fire through how to get all of the files for each of the games that I mentioned already. It's very simple. For basically every game, you want to head to the game's website and the download section, and you want to download the full zip, not the installer. We need the full zip because it has all of the assets, all of the files, and everything that you need, whereas the installer only works on a PC because it'll install it for you. 
So let's quickly go through the games that I mentioned before and how to get those files. And you can just pick one game if you want, or if you want to follow along and do all of the games, you can do that too. It's up to you. For Pokemon Reunion, head to their website and then the download tab. It'll open a mega link, so go right ahead and right click the full version, download, and standard download. Keep in mind that this game is 2.21 gigabytes. For Pokemon Insurgents, head to their website and then the download button. You want to select the full download option and then the download button under it. This game is 691 megabytes. Most of these are large, so just keep that in mind. For Pokemon Uranium, head to their website and the play button. It'll take you to Reddit and download the zip version. It'll now take you to Mega, so download it. For Pokemon Reborn, head to their website and scroll down to the download button. Scroll down again and grab the Windows 7 or earlier version. Don't grab the Windows 8 or later one. For Pokemon Rejuvenation, head to their website and scroll down to the download button. Scroll down again and grab the latest Windows version. It'll now take you to Mega, so download it. Now, if you're crazy like I am and you grab them all on the PC instead, fair warning that it would take you hours to transfer them all to your device at once if you extract them on the PC first. And if you're familiar with Android, your screen needs to be on during the transfer for it not to disconnect. So you would be sitting there tapping the screen every 20 minutes or so to avoid the 30 minute timeout on your display. So I suggest that you transfer them over as zips to your device first and put them in a folder. I call mine just Pokemon fan games and it's on the SD card in my ROMs folder, but you can put it anywhere you want. Then on the actual device, you can extract those zips using Solid File Explorer. You can do it by just pushing and holding on the zip, clicking the three dots, and then selecting Extract. You can now remove the original zip files if you want after extracting. Now let's go ahead and open JoyPlay again. Click the plus sign top right, and navigate to one of the game's folders. Mine are on the external storage and in my ROMs folder, and the Pokemon fan game subfolder as I mentioned before. I'm going to start with Pokemon Insurgents and you want to just select the exe file in the folder. So in this case, and in most cases, it's just called game.exe. You can now give the game a name, a version, and a thumbnail if you want, but I'll be skipping those. It's going to ask if you want to extract the game files, click yes and let it do its thing. Now we can do the same thing for the other games. So with Uranium, it's the same steps except the exe is called uranium.exe. Reunion, Reborn, and Rejuvenation are all the same steps as well, so you can just go ahead and do those if you have them. Now, if you try to run a game, you're likely going to get a pop-up like mine, and it says that we need to download RTP, and in this case it says it's for RPG Maker XP. Thankfully, there's a download button right there, so click it. On this website, scroll down and select the RPG Maker XP tab, since that's what we need for this specific game, and click download bottom right. Head back to JoyPlay and click the game again, and this time select choose and then navigate to the file that we just downloaded and select it. It'll extract, so just let it do its thing. After that's done, try clicking the game again, and this time you're likely going to be asked for a whole bunch of permissions, and you should just allow them all. This time we'll actually load up the game, and if you're using touchscreen, you're basically all set. But for those of us using a controller or a handheld, we need to fix a few things. Select the tab at the top and the X button to close and head back to JoyPlay's main screen. Head to Settings top right 
and scroll down to P Essentials Settings, and then enable Input Overrides. Open a game and select the tab at the top. Then Settings, Cog on the right, and scroll down to Gamepad Mapping. Now, you might have things here already, and personally, I just removed them all, and then started pushing buttons on my controller for them to show up. But either way works. It might not have every button on your controller showing as default, so that's why I just chose to remove everything and do it myself. Now, sometimes pushing a button on my controller made me exit this screen. So just come back in and you basically want to delete any items that aren't a button or D-pad. So things like back and so on. You should be left with a list like mine. Now, here comes the hard part. We have to map the controls on our device to the controls of the game. For Insurgents, what I did was head into the game's main screen, control section, and I did this all using the on-screen touch controls. And if you scroll through here, you can see all of the actions and the right controls, and it's mapped to a keyboard. So for example, the action button is enter in this game, and so we need to head to gamepad mapping again, and I want to use button A on my controller, and I'm going to map it to Enter. So now that's my Action button. Then you can map the D-pad buttons, and it matches a keyboard's WASD. So W is up, A is left, S is down, and D is right. Now you can map other buttons to whichever buttons you'd like. I sort of just mapped action and cancel right now, and as you play the game, you might find that you need another button, so you can just map it. Remember, to get a button to show here, you have to actually push it on your controller first, and I would set any buttons that you're not using to zero to avoid them being used, or you can just remove them if you want. Now, for at least a little bit, I would suggest not hiding the on-screen buttons, just in case, and just minimizing them by clicking the tabs. But if you prefer to hide the buttons after getting everything correctly mapped, you can do so in JoyPlay's main screen, go to Settings, Gamepad Settings, and enable Hide Virtual Gamepad. Now, you have to map controls for each individual game. It doesn't save across games, so follow the same steps again for each game. For Pokemon Uranium, I had to swap controls. Click the rotating circle icon on the bottom right, and you're going to see that your controls have swapped for the touchscreen. Use C to select, and head to Options, then Set Controls, and you can now map your controls, and I'll do mine quickly on screen. I'm going to zero out all of the buttons that we don't use, and then I'm going to set button A to C for action, and then button B to X for cancel. And then we have to add the D-pad, so push your D-pad buttons to get them to show, and then map WASD to them. Now it all works, and you can navigate around. Once again, I didn't map everything. There was a run option and some other things there, and I'll leave that to you to add if you want. Then we come to Project Reunion, and this one doesn't have a Show Controls option. But, if you've been following along, you know that it's very likely that C is Action and X is Cancel. And we can test it using the rotating circle, and I can confirm that, yep, both are correct. So let's map as usual and add our D-pad buttons, and we're all set once again. Then we come to Pokemon Reborn, and no button works to get into controls. So let's try the same thing as before, setting Action to C and Cancel to X, and setting our D-pads. 
Then I'm kind of curious, so I'm going to go into New Game, and maybe we can control our character, and there might be a settings with some controls. And I was kind of right. Right before all of that, I got to see a screen that shows you all of the controls for the game. So now you can just remap to your heart's content for all of these new options that we have. Pretty handy. Since Pokemon Rejuvenation is made by the same people, the control screen is basically the same as well. So you can use the same for both games. So it's pretty easy. For any game that you add, just follow these same steps. You can safely try Action as C and Cancel as X, and I think for most games that should just work and it'll let you at least get into the game's controls section to see what other buttons might do. I can't confirm that all of these steps work the same on every handheld or controller, but I can confirm that they at least work on the AYN Odin 2 that I'm using in this video. One last tip before I send you on your merry way to play some video games. If you run into a scenario where you start playing the game, or are playing the game, and suddenly the tiles are all messed up and the game just looks weird and not right, push and hold on the game on the joy play screen, and then scroll down to optimize maps and click enter to start the process. This usually fixes any games that have tile map issues. I know that Pokemon Infinite Fusion is one of those games, but there's probably more. I think you can use optimized maps on every game anyways, but I didn't test it so it'll be up to you if you want to do so. Otherwise you're done, just go ahead and play some games and have some fun. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.